looking at something that's pretty darn amazing. It's lichen, and you can find it almost everywhere. In your backyard, in a park, or out bush. And it's an important part of our ecosystem. I'm in the plant bank at the Australian Botanic Garden in southwest Sydney with Dr Cathy Offord and she's got a liking for lichen. Well, lichens aren't actually a plant, but they, they, they look like plants. It's a partnership between a fungus and an algae, and it's what scientists call a symbiosis. So it's a mutually derived benefit from the partnership. So the fungus provides a, a home and it, it captures uh, moisture and um, nutrients from the air, and the algae photosynthesizes and produces food for the fungus. Lichens are very, very common, and so they're covering around 8% of the land on Earth. So they're very important in recycling carbon dioxide and producing oxygen. They're also very important in the formation of soil. So they break down rocks, and when they die, they add to the organic matter in the soil. There are big plans for these unusual organisms. This whole garden is dedicated to lichen. We've got the very dark and moist area down here under the area that we call the crypt and going up towards the top here, which is very hot and sunny and dry. And what we know about lichens is that they can grow in very extreme environments. So they can grow in temperatures of up to 90 degrees Celsius and they can also grow in extremely low temperatures. Uh, they grow in Antarctica. If there's one creature that could grow in outer space, it would be a lichen. What's the background to all of this stone? Oh, well, this stone, it's all sandstone and it's all from old demolished buildings from the colonial era in Sydney, so it's all Sydney sandstone. And the other thing that we can see here is that there's quite a diversity of sandstone types. So we've given different micro environments for the lichens to establish themselves. How many varieties of lichen are there? Uh, well, there's around 14,000 species in the world and about uh, 10% of those are unique to Australia. Not all lichens are green. Here we've got a yellowy orange one, that's a quite orange one there, limey green one there. Are there um, any other colours? Oh yeah, there's plenty of colours. You can get red, you can get some purples. These colours are used as dyes. So they've been used for thousands of years in traditional cultures for dyeing fabrics. Not all lichens grow flat on rocks on the ground. Uh, it does grow on the ground, but its uh, filaments grow up into the air. Basically, the lichen is behaving like a plant. It's catching uh, dirt and nutrients, and it's also absorbing moisture out of the air. Lichens are very slow growing, and some species can take years, even decades, to get going. So it's a good thing that they've been working on a way to speed up the process. Plants have been collected and grown for centuries. What do you know about growing lichen? Well, we're learning a lot. Um, here we've been growing some lichens for a few years. And you can see on this side, we um, haven't been trying to grow lichens. On this side, we've been applying lichens and growth formula. And you can see some pretty good growth. That's good growth for about three and a half years. So can they grow on various surfaces? Oh, look, they can grow on lots of surfaces. You can see them growing on the asphalt here. They'll grow on the shade cloth. They'll probably grow on you if you stood still. <laughs> <laughs> Bearded lichen. So what's in the formula that you're using? Well, this is magnificent formula number 29, and it's got lichen in it, obviously. It's got uh, buttermilk, and that's really good for getting the right pH. It's got some flour for sticking it on. It's got, importantly, fertiliser. How do you actually apply the special formula? We just paint it on with a paintbrush. Simple as that? As simple as that. Well, I hope to be back at some stage to check on how the lichen is coming along. It'll take time, but I reckon some things are definitely worth waiting for. It's appreciating their role in the ecosystem and how they might just be a different horticultural alternative to growing uh, traditional flowers and plants. Daylilies are beautiful plants with their verdant strappy leaves and their big showy flowers that, as the name suggests, don't last for too long. But did you know, the flowers are actually edible. They're great in Asian stir fries or soups, or you can eat them straight off the plant. Bon appetit.
beautiful, isn't it? It's a swamp orchid, a native wildflower. One of the common ways of propagating orchids is to split them. But sometimes I find splitting can set the plants back. Fortunately, with this species, there's an alternative way to propagate them. This is a new flower spike, and this is an old one. And this is what I'm going to use to propagate it. All you do is cut the old spike into sections about the length of a pencil. Press them into some fresh propagating mix. Keep the propagating mix damp, not wet. Place a dome over the top and leave the ventilation gaps open. In a few weeks, new plants will start forming at the nodes and after a year, you can separate individual plants and pop them up. This is what you'll get in a couple of years' time. Orchid growing is definitely for gardeners with patience, but what a result. <laughs> <laughs>